Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What do we got here? What do we got here, guys? Isn't that a strange looking creature? Let's tip him over. Ooh. <laughs> that is a horseshoe crab. He has uh, not made it very well outside the water though. He's sleeping, he's sleeping. What's going on everyone? Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well. Still hanging out here on the uh, Florida East Coast here. This is not the ocean, that's a river. What's the name of this river? You know? Banana River. The banana? The Banana River. Yeah, okay. So I think it's kind of salty in there also. I'll be uploading this video with some Nomad internet. There's a link below in the video description if you need some mobile internet. Hanging out here with uh, some friends here, but I want to show you how close my car and RV is to the water. There's smart car, RV, some nice sand, and the water. Yeah. So hanging out here uh, one last time at least with uh, Robert, Sean, and Jill hey. Jillifer, and uh, Jasmine over here, baby, baby girl, the puppy. So um, yeah, from here, I don't know. I'm going, I don't know what everybody else is doing. I'm going farther down south. I can't get any campgrounds in the Keys, all the state parks, even though I keep checking. You never know. If there's a last minute cancellation, I'm probably going to grab it up because I have found that these state parks are really, really nice. But uh, I'm going to hang out here for a little bit and then uh, we'll hit the road and go find some new adventures today. Thanks for joining me, guys. All right, I had breakfast, I showered, said goodbye to everybody. It's going to... I don't know. I'm going to miss them all, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm going south. Everybody else is going north. <laughs> I'm on A1A as we travel down beautiful, sunny Florida coast right now. And I'm, I'm only going to bring this up once, I swear, so that I don't have to dress it again. The exhaust leak is back in the same exact spot. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say. Thank you, Ford. Thank you, Ford. We are in Cocoa Beach now, and hopefully we're going to see some fun stuff today, guys. Thanks for joining me. Here we go. I'm also going to be traveling with the windows open in the back here. It's going to sound a little weird and everything, but it's going to be 82 degrees today here in Florida, and it just seems like it's a little, it's a little warmer than I'm comfortable with. So I did not check to make sure I have a way to get out of here again, but it looks to be a pretty big parking lot here. Test some of my viewers here, see, see if you uh, remember this old classic TV show from the 60s here. To me, I have always been a fan of TV shows in the 60s. I don't know what it was about them necessarily, but like I love all of my, my Batman series that started in the, in the 60s. Didn't run for, I think, only three or four years, but this little park is named after a famous TV show here in Cocoa Beach. Okay, maybe it's not that famous. Does anybody know yet? We got a little doggy park over here. All right, there's the street sign there. It says, I dream of Jeannie Lane. Yeah, be honest now. Does anybody actually remember that TV show? Uh, I, I don't know. It takes place here in Cocoa Beach, I guess. It's about an astronaut who uh, has some trouble in the sky, lands on a remote island, then finds this magic bottle, rubs it, and Jeannie pops out. Jeannie spelled J-E-A-N-N-I-E. -E. So here's a little poster here, I dream of Jeannie. I Dream of Genie was part of a Cocoa Beach when a television sitcom ran from 65 to 70 starring Barbara Eden as a 2,000-year-old female genie and Larry Hagman as an astronaut. The TV series was set in and around Cocoa Beach. Barbara Eden visited Cocoa Beach in 1996 when the I Dream of Genie street sign was placed at Lori Wilson Park, which is where we're at. And there's your sign. It's been taken a few times, so instead of having it at a normal level, they put it way up high so that people don't steal it and put it on eBay. I'm being dead honest with you. I have seen episodes of that show both in black and white and color. I watch a lot of older stuff on Comet TV and Grit TV and Me TV, and, and they all do all kinds of old, old classic uh, TV shows like that. So anyway, this is what that show was based on from Coco Beach. Hang on, I, I'm not really in a rush or anything today. Let's, let's talk Florida real quick. Florida uh, as a snowbird place uh, in the winter. It, there used to be a time where I would come to Florida and I would get really discouraged if I came to a place like this that's beautiful and right by the ocean, but there's signs everywhere that say, no overnight parking, no overnight camping. I'd be like, man, and I'd just kick rocks and go down the road, right? But 
I've, I've changed my thinking in that because, I mean, although there are some paid spots, this is another free spot to enjoy all day long. There's no taxes, there's, there's no parking fees, you just park and enjoy the ocean here, which I'm gonna do. And I have no problem with that because I can enjoy the outdoors and the beautiful spots as much as possible in the day and then all I gotta do, just gotta find a spot to park, you know? How hard can that be, right? Well, we'll, we'll find out by the end of this video, actually. Good spot to whip up a sandwich, have lunch here. The heat is, is slightly starting to bother me. I don't think it's 80 degrees yet. It might be. It's 11 a.m. It, yeah, it could be. I don't know. But who cares if you end up boondocking at a, at a Walmart for the end of the night when you get to be at the ocean all day, you know? Awesome. Oh, I love Florida. Florida. Yeah. Yeah. May even go grab my chair, sit out here for a little bit. I'll get back to you guys. Also, battery's doing pretty good. 84% having no problem. You know, it takes a little longer for the sun to get up there and do much, you know, in, in, in the winter time. But I think I woke up and it was at 77%. So we're doing just fine boondocking off solar here and brewing coffee off solar. <laughs> well, I've come back to uh, Highway 1 which is farther inland than A1A over there. I uh, still got a nice view. There's palm trees and I believe we're still out there at the Banana River out there, but speed limit out here is between 45 and 55. As you can see, it's three lanes. It's more of like actual get somewhere road, not quite as scenic as A1A, but you cannot drive A1A all the way down the coast in an RV. It is so slow, like, it's very slow going with all of the stoplights and the speed limits and the tourism that happens over there. So uh, we'll cut back here in, in a minute because I want to boondock a little closer to the water tonight. How cool would that be to park somewhere and actually be able to walk to the beach from where I'm living that night in the RV? I think that's what it's all about. So we'll see. I'll put on a little bit of miles. I'll stop in anything quirky. Hey, going back to the 60s. This is an old juice stand from the 60s that's been preserved. It might be the world's largest orange. I don't know for sure, but I will say one thing. There's no graffiti or crap on this one. It is well taken care of and preserved, but it is no longer a juice stand, apparently. I don't think. Let's go make sure. Would this have been where you got juice? It may just be like a storage unit or something now. I'm not sure. But it's complete. It's an orange. Nope. Here's where it was. Okay, this is cool. So it's now a, a veterans building establishment property. It actually probably got, got moved here. This whole thing was probably on the beach somewhere serving fresh squeezed orange juice. And this is the counter where you would order your orange juice. So again, it's nice that this one has not been completely destroyed or vandalized yet. It is complete and it's beautiful. In my experience, hanging out here in Florida in the winter, it's a little easier to stealth camp here rather than A1. Yeah, I said stealth camp in a 32-foot Class A towing a car. But it, it is. Look, I'll show you. You'll be a believer. Maybe you won't. I don't know. Here's a Walmart. But it does say on my app that they are not friendly to RV. I see one RV in there. I'm going to use it as a backup, okay? So that could be my backup if it doesn't work. I'm looking off to our right here, but those are for single cars and the and we're right next to the highway. I'm not the guy. I mean, I'll park there if I'm just going to go hang out for the day, but I won't sleep there. No way. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That's what I'm talking about. So that... Okay, I'm looking at a couple things, though. Railroad tracks. However... Look at all this open room right here. And we're not level, but... Let me think about this. Let me think about it. Let me think about it. I don't think anybody's living in this house right here, though. We're so close to the tracks, though. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. But this angle ain't gonna work. However, we got leveling jacks. I know, I know, you're not a believer yet. 
<laughs> I've been doing this 10 years, guys. Uh, I only put up the one side of leveling because it was only to the curb side. So now I'm level enough. And the only other thing I want to mention is this may deter someone when you see a house that is like completely ugly and dilapidated and forgotten about and uh, broken windows and stuff like that. But I, I also know as a boondocker, as a stealth camper here that nobody in this house is gonna call and say, hey, there's an RV out front. Probably not gonna happen, right? Now the railroad tracks, that's just something I've gotten used to, you know, for me. However, if we turn around here, don't know if you can see, but that is the water. It's not the ocean, it's, it's, it's a river or a little bay inlet or something. And we're gonna go explore a little bit around here and I'm gonna, of course, lock up the RV and everything. But also it is that time that I need to give some love to both of my generators. So my onboard Onan generator and my portable champion generator, I need to run them both for at least two hours under load so that they can maintain and keep the fluids going so that they will always work when I need them to. So even though I'm getting lots of solar and my batteries are at 100%, I'm gonna fire up the Onan right now, turn on the air conditioner and then lock and secure everything up. And then we're gonna go hang out together towards the water. All right, buddy, you stay cool, okay? Got the AC on, got the generator on, kitty stays cool. By the time I get back, it'll be time for dinner dinner, okay? All right, I'll see you in a tiny bit. Gosh, I am still so thankful to have a working Onan generator, guys. I'm also glad that I really do have a backup. The generator exhaust is on the driver's side of the RV, so it's not quite as loud. But yeah, she's as, she's as secure as she's gonna get, guys. No worries. Okay, and if I didn't mention it before, we're in the city of Sebastian, home of the Pelican Island, Main Street boat ramp, but also we've got the city of Sebastian Rotary Club boardwalk here. Oh, this is, this is nice. The shade's gonna feel really nice here in just a second. That sun is beating down on me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is, this is wonderful. Starting to see some water there from the river. Well, I guess this, no, I don't think this is a river. I think this is the bay actually, I'm sorry. I think because the water's so clear, even if there were gators around here, I don't think there are, but I, I, I would go like up to my knees in that stuff because I can see and everything. But I'm gonna go check out a quirky little thing over here I saw. Okay, okay. This is what caught my eye. Mel Fisher's treasure exhibit and sales. I don't know, but they do have a cannon and cannonballs outside. And it does say we're open. Please practice social distancing. Hmm. Yeah, so this part of the coast is really apparently well known for treasure hunting. And this is a treasure hunting museum here that appears to be open. I got my mask just in case I have to wear my mask inside. But uh, let's go get some information on Mel Fisher's treasure hunting. I'm gonna take you through here because they gave me permission to look at a few things. I'm not gonna show you the whole place here, but I'll point out a few of my favorites. Also worth mentioning, uh, masks are not required in indoor here. However, the city has mandated that uh, you you cannot wear a hat unless the hat is backwards. <laughs> and you can't wear sunglasses. <laughs> but out of all the things, for whatever reason, the, the city has said that indoors, your hat has to be worn backwards. That's an actual law in this city. So that's why I'm doing this. So, you, you never know, man. In the mid 70s, he was tracking some of these famous ships from the 1600s that uh, capsized and uh, so one of them, I think it was called the Acosta, was one of his big hauls, and they got some of that here. I mean, look at that. Those are gold bars from the 1600s, and they have little engravings on them that help the historians determine what region they came from. I mean, this is this is early civilization, you know? That's, that's currency in the 1600s. And there's some silver in there. Even some uh, religious artifacts, you know? They could also go to a museum or something like that. Jeez, look at that gold plate. <laughs> oh my gosh. And the famous Spanish galleon, here, here it is loading at Havana Harbor in Cuba. And uh, that's the one they found that was scattered with a bunch of gold. Here's a bronze bust of Mr. Mel Fisher. Yeah, he worked hard, but <laughs> it paid off for him, man. I'll tell you what, he was a rich man, a millionaire, man. Gotta have rum out at sea, right? Yeah. So we got GoPros today, but this is an underwater camera housing from 1950. 
I wonder how they dealt with it fogging up the camera lens and stuff in there. <laughs> I don't know. Old pieces of guns. That's a McQuillet pistol that's pretty much falling apart. It was under sea forever. That just looks like a piece of wood. In the movie, they talked about these. They're called an ingot. It's basically a silver bar, similar to what a gold bar might look like, but they were they were worth a lot. And it's got a 99.93% pure rating. Lift a gold bar. Yeah, they put one gold bar in there, and you can physically feel it. Oh, wow, it's really heavy, too. Wonder how much that's worth right there. That's crazy. Getting some vibes from Little Mermaid. Look at these silver spoons. I mean, they barely even resemble spoons. And forks, that one looks like a trident right there. It is incredible. Everything here made out of silver. You wouldn't think a plate would be worth that much. You know, all torn apart like that. But it's pure silver, man. Just, just the mother load. Cool old bell here. It was found in 1990. It's a 1715 bell from a shipwreck. And, and copper. Copper's worth a lot, too. It's copper pans here. Here's another look at some of the silver coins that they found under there. They didn't look like that when they pulled them up in the 80s, though. They had to use this electrolyte thing to get all the salt water and crud off of all of them. And then they could start reading some of the inscriptions on them. Bullions. Yep. And of course, we have machines that are going to do this work, but <laughs> there's somebody uh, diving. Just picking through everything. They just, these days, they just put big machines down there that suck everything up to the top of the ship, and then they look through it on the ship instead. A lot easier, a lot safer, too. But no matter how much you collect, life is short. <laughs> so you can collect as much as you want, but you better live in the now because Mel Fisher is no longer with us. And now there's this museum. I mean, I'm sure his family has a, a lot of his earnings, too, but now it's just a big old museum to see everything he collected from the sea. But it's still cool because, you know, he changed the course of history. And there's still scholars today going through all this stuff and trying to piece together, you know, the history of, of humanity, you know, because of the things he found. So it is really cool. I highly recommend this place, Mel Fisher's tre treasure spot. I'm going to go check in on Jax. Hey, Tater Tot, how you doing? Hey, Miranda. Oh, it's so nice having a generator that stays running. What an idea. And I still got all my wheels and tires, so... <laughs> uh, nobody's gonna mess with my RV. Jax man, you're still in the same spot. As I promised. I did, I promised you treats. I sure did, you did good for an hour while I was gone. Here's some treats for the Jax man. Nom, nom, nom. Oh, all right, all right. But oh, I almost forgot to show you my magnet. It says Mel Fisher's Treasures on there. It's got actual cloth sails on the pirate ship. Half, half of a pirate ship. It's a, it's a pretty cool magnet. And apparently Mel Fisher, they also have a Key West location. We're in the Sebastian location here, so interesting. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I guess we're putting them down here now. That's where they go, like that. All right, meow, yes, I know. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make dinner eat it here and then I'll probably go back out to the water out there. Uh, not that I really wanted to, but I, I can't put the slide out because it's the uh, road streets right there. So it'll be still camping. I'll let you know how it goes when it gets dark tonight here because I am going to have to close up everything. And like I said, I, I call it stealth camping because you want to keep low profile, you know? You don't want people to really know you're in the RV, but you also don't want people to think the RV is unoccupied. So there's tricks to that. More on that later tonight. Well, I got a bad vibe over there. No nothing happened. Nobody told me I had to leave. But uh, a gentleman walking his poodle uh, knocked on my door on my RV and wanted to strike up a conversation. I'm okay talking with strangers if I don't feel a threat or anything. Uh, he's just asking me all these questions. And then he said that there's a city ordinance. I'm just, he said, I'm letting you know, I don't care, but there is a city ordinance against RVs in the city of Sebastian. I said, really? Because uh, I looked on the City Hall website, looked through all the codes, and didn't find anything ahead of time. He said, oh yeah, it's it's been here since the city was established that RVs can't park here in this. It's one of the things about Florida is that the locals here 
Unfortunately, they just don't like the sight of RV. It doesn't matter how much money you pour into the community and the small businesses and how much tourism you might help to bring there, the, the physical sight of an RV angers people that have come here to just retire in peace. And um, he, he was nice about his grumpiness, but still, you know, I, I don't know. It just gave me the, it, it gave me a weird feeling there. So I went ahead and came over here to the Walmart anyway, my backup spot. Uh, and I'm over here in the garden area, kind of by myself. Like I said, there's one more RV. He's sitting in his RV over there, but I think he's gonna overnight park as well. And uh, yeah, and also I brought out the uh, portable generator. I think it is much louder than my Onan. Or maybe it's just the way the Onan's in the compartment and you can't hear it as well. But this always, every time I run it outside, it's a, it's probably one of the loudest inverters there are. That's okay. It's on a side that doesn't bother me. And I have all of my compartments locked up except the one that physically has the cord coming out. I would not leave this out here at night, not locked or chained up. I do have a chain for it, but I don't really see the point. It's the middle of the day. It's plugged in. If you think you're gonna take it while I'm sitting in my RV and I'm not gonna hear you take it, then, you know, Otherwise, yeah, keep it locked up. One of the worst things you can do to a generator is let it sit and not run it. So even if you don't need it, you always want to fire it up occasionally under load to let everything remember how to work in there and let all the oils and fuel and everything not clog the carb and stuff like that. So plan B, Jack's man. Well, we got the generator running. I'm going to charge a bunch of stuff like my drone batteries and my speaker and maybe even do some double AA, a triple a batteries and stuff like that i'll uh, stay here at the walmart hopefully overnight and everything will be okay and then we'll get back on the road and go even farther south in our next video we'll see you soon guys thanks for joining us bye bye